Hello, hello YouTube. Watch this. Oh, that. Stop recording. Yo, hello, my gorgeous viewers. Today, we will continue the learning journey with another game hacking tutorial. I somehow disabled the comments on the last video, Bruh. but now they should be available, so write something nice. We will find unknown game variables, which means values that are not displayed for us directly to search for. This could be the health bar or even the y-axis of the game character. I know you guys asked for a pointer video that will come, but I felt like finding difficult values would fit before that. Subscribe, like, or write a comment. I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. Now, don't be a douche. Do not use sheets for unfair advantages. Do not use it in multiplayer. You will get banned. Just don't do it. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled. Now enjoy this tutorial. Alright, so welcome to the, today's showcase. We will, in this tutorial, with Sheet Engine, find a value. This is the game Shante. Find a value that is unknown to us, or the initial value is unknown. So, for example, of unknown values, it could be the y-axis of the character that could be found using this method. You can find the fireballs you can see on the bar to the left. That value isn't shown really, but it is still there and you can find it using this method. And once we have the address and its value, we can change it to whatever we want, like unlimited fireballs. All right, enjoy. All right, all right, all right. So welcome to today's tutorial. You will need Sheet Onion. I have a video on installing Sheet Onion, so make sure that you have the executable ready, like me, and have it running. Sheet Onion right here, and your game. I have Shanti, half genie hero, and for today's goal, is to change a value inside of the game, like the gems, but with the catches, we don't know the initial type or value. So it's something that we don't really understand, but we can still find it with Sheet Engine using deduction processes, like knowing that it increased or it decreased and so on. I'll explain further on that later. Just keep in mind that we don't really know what the value is. Let's, uh, for this example, we will use the fireball ammunition. So in this game, you can shoot fireballs. You can see in the top left corner that we have a bar and when we shoot, the ammunition gets lower. Now, it doesn't really display uh, an ammo variable like 10 ammo or 15 ammo, 20. It just displays a bar up here. So we don't really understand. It could be a four byte. It could be a decimal number. It could be whatever. We don't, we don't know. So what we will do is we will search for an unknown value. So we attach it sheet engine to the game then search for unknown initial value. For the value type, you could, if you have a clue or you suspect it, it, it's a specific data type, you can change this value type to something or just take all to catch all of the data types. But let's start with four bytes and uh, do our initial scan. So it catched all of the values inside of the game, including this bar value, and to sort of filter out the faulty addresses, we will now change this value in a way that we can deduct 
it's from others. For example, we can shoot a fireball and then search for values that have decreased. So let's do that. We shoot a fireball, it decreased. We search for decreased value. Let's do it a couple of more times. Shoot fireball, search for decreased value. Shoot, shoot some fireballs, decreased value. Decreased value. Okay, so after doing it a couple of times, we only have five addresses left. You could, if you have still quite a lot of numbers left, you could increase this value. For example, getting more fireball ammunition. Tax some enemies. Take this pot that replenishes ammo. You can see that it's now at the top. Instead of searching for decreased, you search for increased now because it's higher, the value. Four addresses left, I think that's low enough. Let's investigate these values. Let's uh, change this first one or click the freeze box. You click two times to bring it down to this address table. Then click the freeze box and check if it's staying in, staying in place. And it doesn't. Wait, I have some enemies here. Yeah, get out of here. So if it would stay in place, it would mean that we have the correct address. But it doesn't. So let's remove it. Check the next one. Nothing. Remove it. Still nothing. And that leaves us to our last address in the search results. And if we click the freeze box here, the value stays the same. So we have actually found our fireball ammunition from not knowing to having unlimited fireballs by clicking the freeze box or checkbox. We can change the description to match this fireball ammo. And because we have this sort of value, which doesn't tell us much, we can change the type by double clicking on the four bytes here to something that probably gives us a better understanding of it. For example, a float data type might be the more correct one in this case. So we select float and it says 71. So I would think in this scenario that it's a value between 0 to 100. We can prove this by just investigating stuff. Change it to 10 and it's down low. So I think we have found that was unknown. Now it's known to us just by using logic and cheat engine. This works with most of the values uh, in games. Make sure to write down in the comments on what I should cover next. I think pointers will be a good one to cover. All right, see ya.